Hi guys, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. Today we are going to start video of our series interview piping questions. Let's start the video. First, what are the insulation material used for piping systems? There are two insulation materials used for piping system, fibrous and rigid. For fibrous, we use rock and glass wool and for rigid, we use calcium silicate, polyisocyanurate, cellular glass. Next, how can flanges be classified based on face finish? Flanges can be classified as smooth finish and serrated finish. Next, where are the smooth finish flanges and serrated finish flanges find its use? The smooth finish flanges is provided when metallic gasket is provided and serrated finish flanges is provided when no metallic gasket is used. Next, what are the types of serrated finish provided on flange face? Stock finish, spiral serrated that is phonographic and concentric serrated. Next, up to what temperature the carbon steel materials shall be used? Carbon steel materials can be used for temperatures ranging from minus 29 degrees Celsius to 427 degrees Celsius. If you wish to pursue a piping course under Piping Mantra, please fill out a form given in the description box below. The form will help us in arranging our logistics. Next, which material is used for temperature above 427 degrees Celsius? Alloy steel materials can be used above this temperature. Next, which material is used for temperatures below minus 29 degrees Celsius? Low temperature carbon steel can be used for low temperatures. Next, which type of material is used for corrosive fluids? Stainless steel or corrosion resistant alloy CRA materials shall be used for corrosive fluids. Next, what type of piping materials are used for drinking water and instrument air? Galvanized steel or stainless steel materials shall be used for drinking water and instrument air. Next, what is the difference between pipe and tube? Pipe is identified by NB that is nominal diameter and thickness is defined by schedule whereas tube is defined by OD that is outside diameter and its thickness by BWG that is Birmingham wire gauge. In pipe outside diameter that is OD is constant whereas in tube inside diameter that is ID is constant. Next from which sides onwards nominal diameter of pipe is equal to the outside diameter of pipe? From the size 14 NB and above, nominal diameter is equals to OD of the pipe. Next, where the welded and seamless pipes are used for carbon steel? 16 inches and above, welded pipes are used, whereas below 16 inches, seamless pipes are used. Next, what are the different types of welding? We have four types of welding. Saw, that is submerged arc welding. TIG, that is tungsten inert gas welding, MIG that is metal inert gas welding, SMO that is shielded metal arc welding. Next, what is the basic difference between pipe specification A106 grade A, grade B and grade C? Difference is due to the carbon tensile strength and percentage of carbon content. Tensile strength in A106 grade A is 330 MPa. A106 grade B is 415 megapascal, grade 106 grade C is 485 megapascal. In terms of percentage of carbon content, A106 grade A has 0.25% carbon content, A106 grade B has 0.3% of carbon content, A106 grade C has 0.35% of carbon content. Next. What is the difference between pipe specifications A312 TP304 and A312 TP304L, A312 TP316 and A312 TP316L? Difference is due to the carbon content. The letter L denotes lower percentage of carbon. The percentage of carbon content in A312 TP304 has 0.08% of carbon content. A312 TP304L has 0.035% of carbon content. 
A312 TP316 has 0.08% carbon content and A312 TP316L has only 0.035% of carbon content. Next, how to show piping spec break in PNID and in piping layout? On your screen, you can see the image. This is how we show the spec break in PNID, normally at wall vent or anywhere preferably at a flange. One side of this spec break is having higher rating and another one is having lower rating. In this case, higher one is 300 and the lower one is in 150 rating. By seeing this break, anybody can get confused that after the break, we will have valve and flanges in 150 rating. However, this is not the case. Let's see how we route this. Till this flange, we will follow the spec 3A3K1 and flange of same spec that is in 300 rating. And after that, we have new spec starting from the valve that is 1P3K1 that is in 150 rating. However, the connecting flange is 300 so we will have 300 rating valve in 1P3K1 spec which will be called out as out of spec valve. Same we will do with flange connected to the other end of the valve to match the numbers of bolts in 300 rating flange. After that flange technically we have 150 rating. There we will have one question arising that is can we do it in reverse? I mean all these two flanges and valves will be in 150 rating and that arrangement will be less costly. Technically, we can't do this because the connecting 300 rating flange have to sustain more pressure which can't be achieved by using 150 rating. Next, how to calculate pipe thickness? Explain its formula. Tm is equals to Pd by 2 Sc plus Py plus C1 plus C2 where Tm is the thickness of pipe, P is the internal design gauge pressure, D is the pipe OD, S is the allowable stress, E is the joint quality factor, Y is the coefficient, C1 is the corrosion allowance which is 1.6 mm in general for carbon steel and 0 mm for stainless steel, C2 is the depth of thread used only up to 1.5 mm. Thickness is corrected to consider the mill tolerances of 12.5% which is 8 by 7 in the formula. So, the final pipe thickness is 8 by 7 into PD by 2 SC plus PY plus C1 plus C2. So, that is it guys for today's video. We love reading your comment and suggestions, so please comment below. We do read every single one of your comment. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues who may find it useful. If you have any time, please check out our other videos over there.